that is widespread in Texas. And unfortunately, power continues to be uh, the main uh, story here when it comes to people without power right now. Uh, that's right. We've got a situation here in Texas right now where people are demanding we've got to have our power back on, but they also are demanding answers as to why did we get here. And uh, the finger pointing, the political finger pointing started very early today here all across Texas with people, uh, uh, the uh, Democrat leadership on the House, uh, Texas House side saying that this is a complete failure and leadership and then on the uh, the the governor side who is a uh, state republican uh, very upset with uh, grid managers and and how they have handled the situation and have not handled the situation one of the things that really upset the governor today was i did an interview with the uh, ceo of ERCOT, ERCOT being one of the uh, the largest grid managers here in the state of texas and he told me uh, the ceo of uh, ERCOT, uh, Bill uh, Magnus, told me that they knew that this was going to be bad, but they didn't realize just how bad it was going to be, and the plans that they had in place just were not good enough. That excuse, that answer was not good enough for Governor Greg Abbott, who earlier today uh, announced that he was ordering a full-scale, top-to-bottom investigation of the power grid manager, ERCOT. He wants to know what did they do before the storm came when he uh, issued a disaster declaration because he said, I told them this was coming. He wanted to know what they, the plans were and then what kind of decision-making process did they go into in regards to when they started ordering local utilities to start pulling plugs, shedding the power. And the reason why, Magnus says, with ERCOT told me that they had to do this was that that was to prevent a total, complete failure of the electrical grid. They believe that it is just simply a supply and demand situation that we have here in the state of Texas, demand being much higher than the supply that was coming. And as the storm came, the plans that they had in place were not good enough in order to protect all the power plants were online. And then there was some political uh, finger pointing in regards to what caused this domino effect. Was it just the wind farms going online? Well, only wind farms produce now a great, a big chunk, about 23% of the power grid is from the wind farm community and renewables, but it wasn't just the wind farms going down and freezing up here in Texas. We also lost a nuclear power plant that went off online in South Texas and several different natural gas uh, power fed power plants also froze up. And so the big question uh, is why? We had this situation about a decade ago in 2011, the same month of February, major storm came through and we had rolling blackouts. Following that, we had legislative hearings. And part of those hearings was to urge and mandate uh, electrical providers to retrofit and upgrade their power plants so they would be protected from major freezes like we're having right now. I'm told that they did that and that, and in fact, it prevented a big blackout in 2018 that we had here in Texas, but apparently not good enough now in 2021. So a lot of questions going on. We had some good news today. The sun came out and that activated the solar farms. That brought more power into the grid. The bad news, the sun's going down. Those solar farms aren't gonna be generating any extra power overnight. And ERCOT warned there may be more uh, blackouts, shutdowns that will have to be required in the state to control this supply and demand issue that we're having here. Yeah, and that's exactly what people uh, don't want to hear. Rudy, I want to just go over to your uh, Twitter page right now because you and your team do a great job of just updating everybody uh, of what's going on there, not only in Austin, but in the whole state as well. And you just put this up about an hour ago saying uh, don't put generators in your house or in a closed garage because unfortunately carbon monoxide poisoning uh, we are hearing just too much about right now. That's right. We just in that briefing that we heard from, I believe it was in Harris County, where a mother and her eight year old daughter dying from carbon monoxide poisoning. A lot of times people think that they can turn on their ovens or maybe uh, bring a, uh, a, a gasoline generator into the garage or into the house. And uh, they don't realize that the exhaust fumes from those generators will uh, uh, will actually will kill you. Quite frankly, uh, individuals going into the garages, turning on their cars, trying to generate some heat. heat. 
That is the wrong thing to do. So, uh, yeah, uh, we, we've got some serious situations with carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, uh, one of the things that I heard from an interview that we had earlier today, that uh, spoke, uh, an interview, individual who spoke to one of our reporters, uh, he told her that, yeah, I've got a gas fireplace. We've been using that. And I also got a gas range, and I've been turning that on. And you just kind of, you know, no, no, you can't do that, especially don't turn on the oven. So many things can go wrong. The pilot light can go off, and all of a sudden the gas is coming to your house, and you don't realize it. So whatever you do, don't use your stove to do the heat, uh, to get heat. There are warming centers that are in place across the state. Go to those. I talked to the state EMA director, Chief Nin Kidd, today. I asked him, I said, well, aren't you worried about COVID protocols? Aren't you worried that these warming centers will become giant COVID virus petri dishes and he goes no we we proved back during the the summer during the hurricane season when we had some storms that hit the Gulf Coast we created some uh, evacuation centers and they put in COVID pro protocols at those evacuation centers those same protocols social distancing masking and things like that and 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 keeping family units uh, with just family units those protocols are being used right now at these warming centers so if you're worried about um, gosh, should I go to one of these warming centers? Don't worry about it. Just think COVID protocols, social distancing, wear a mask, and you'll get warm and you'll be okay. Yeah, that is the main thing there to, because once once you start getting cold there, that, that's that's pretty much it. You got to keep yourself warm and but do it the right way and not uh, do it these ways that unfortunately people have been doing uh, before and uh, it's getting themselves in serious trouble or even death there as well. So uh, Rudy Koski, thank you so much for breaking it all down for us. We really appreciate your insight on this whole matter.